success, but huge impact on plant growth. Learning the science and the applications of far red light is such an advantage to any grower. I'm talking about earlier flowering times, like a week or two faster, better grafted plants, better cuttings, and all at really low light levels. With far red light, a little bit of input can have a huge payoff. Phytochrome is like a light switch. It has an on and an off position. We're gonna start in the off position, which is called PR, or phytochrome red. In the PR form, it absorbs red light. When it absorbs red light, it switches forms into PFR, which is the active form and stands for phytochrome far red. So in this active form, it can regulate a bunch of plant processes. And actually in its inactive form, it also sort of can do some, it can also affect some plant processes. It's sort of all semantics, but in which way, this is the technically the on position, PFR. And when it's in PFR, now it's ready to absorb far red light. And when PFR absorbs far red light, it changes back to the off position, which is PR. All this light switch stuff, it can get a little bit confusing. Pretty much what you need to imagine is inside your plant, you have a lot of little switches. And based on the ratio of red and far red light, those switches are gonna be either on or off. And those are what are gonna regulate the phytochrome regulated processes. And those include a lot of different things. But first, let's go outside and look at what the ratio looks like outside in full sun. In full sun, there's a lot of red light. And this red light turns PR into PFR, which is the active form. One of the common phytochrome regulated processes that can be observed in full sun is the inhibition of stem elongation, which pretty much just means you get a short plant. But in shade, specifically the shade of a plant canopy, there's a lot less red light. That red light is absorbed by the leaves in the canopy to power photosynthesis. And down here, we have a dominance of far red light. That far red light turns your PFR into PR, the inactive form. PR, the inactive form, you don't have inhibition of stem elongation. What that means is you get a tall plant. And it makes, I mean, it makes sense if you think about it. If you were a plant being grown in the shade of a plant canopy, you would wanna get tall. You're not getting any of that good light in the shade, you know, you're not getting any of that red light that's gonna power your photosynthesis. So you're gonna stretch. You wanna reach up, burst through that canopy so you can get to the good light. Let's look at one more situation. Sunrise and sunset. During both sunrise and sunset, light has to travel further through the atmosphere before reaching the ground. This shifts the spectrum. It shifts it towards warmer colors and you can see this with your eye. At sunset, it starts to look sort of orangish outside. Well, the entire spectrum is actually shifting. And this leads to a huge spike in far red light. This increase in far red light signals the plants that nighttime is about to start. If you remember from episode two, when we discussed photo period, we saw that it wasn't the length of day that affected flowering, it was the length of night. Well, growers can use far red light at the end of day to make their plants think night has started and they actually get into this night mode faster. This can speed up flowering times, shortening it by a significant amount while maintaining the same yields. Let's just get into the garden and look at some of the practical applications of far red light. Probably the most important impact of far red light on plants, at least for most growers, is gonna be the speeding up of flowering time. There's growers that are seeing about a 10 to 14 day reduction in their flowering period for short day plants grown indoors, 
simply when they're exposed to far red as an end of day treatment. Some growers prefer less compact plants because they're easier to use for oil extraction. They, they find it's easier to work with them. Less compact plants are also nice because you can get good airflow through your crops. Uh, when you have bad airflow, sometimes you can have issues with powdery mildew. So having a less compact plant can make it so you have better airflow, which can help prevent powdery mildew. And like we saw in the previous episode, far red light can have an inhibitory effect on the germination of some seeds. A lot of times cut flower growers like to have a long stem when they sell their plants. So you can give your flowering plants far red to get a longer stem. Another one is with mother plants, plants that you're gonna be taking cuttings off of. You can have longer air nodes, you can have longer cuttings, which is especially useful if you're gonna be putting those plants into a, a hydroponic cloner that requires a slightly longer stem. And one of the cool things about adding far red light at this stage is you don't actually affect the width of the stem, the diameter. When you give them far red like you have over here or just red like I have over here, in both situations, the stem is actually the same diameter. So these are the exact same variety and the stem diameters are pretty much exactly the same. So it's not being stretched out, it's just elongating, but it's not like stretching and getting skinny like a rubber band, it's instead it's just, they're just getting taller, not skinnier. And this makes it a lot easier to graft them. So growers are either looking to add far red to a grow or pick a grow light that has a good balance of red to far red so they can get normal growth and they aren't getting stretching or some of the other things you see when you add far red. So on the options that deliver already a good balance of red to far red, you have metal halide, ceramic metal halide like this one, uh, high pressure sodium, double ended high pressure sodium, T5 fluorescence, compact fluorescence, and white LEDs, or even most LEDs are gonna deliver a good balance, or they just deliver all red, which is pretty standard. Most LEDs are gonna be using blue and red LEDs. But there are LED options for adding far red. In fact, most of the options for adding far red to a grow are LEDs. There's this one, which is a slightly lower wattage, but you really don't need that much power when it comes to far red to get results. You can see how much just this little light is affecting the spectrum, even compared to this side. Yeah, it's pretty drastic. And then there's more powerful LED options, like the one I have in the other tent. And that one is really nice because it can be daisy chained into my other LEDs there so they can all be controlled on one controller. And that one's far more powerful so I can put that up high in a greenhouse if I wanted to and get coverage for a huge area. So far red, it's one of those amazing light colors that you really don't need that much of to get big results. If you'd like more information on horticultural lighting, visit FarmerTyler.com. And in the next episode, it's gonna get hot. This episode was made possible with support from Hydro Farm. In this episode, we saw the Power Par Far Red LED. We saw the Solar System Far Red LED fixture. We saw the Sunburst Metal Halide Light. We saw the Sunburst High Pressure Sodium Light. The Phantom DE HBS. The Power Par Commercial Four Foot LED Fixture. Some active aqua stands, some active aqua flood tables, some active aqua low profile legs. You don't even know what I'm talking about, but you really should. Music